Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about how to fetch data using suspense. Now, this is part of a much larger series on React's newly introduced concurrency mode. In the first video, we looked at how to lazy load components using suspense. So it was an introduction to suspense. Now we are going to use suspense to fetch data. This is something new that React is trying out to solve some of the common data fetching issues. I'm sure you've experienced it. I've experienced it. This is pretty cool. So I would recommend checking out the entire series. And since this topic is so complex, I will try to create a simplest example as possible as always. So everybody understands the problem and welcome to TechSeed Tutorials. Okay, so before we get started, I want to give a, a very quick shout out to our sponsor of this video today called Node Run. Node Run is a new cloud-based IDE that makes full stack JavaScript development super fast and easy. It includes everything that you need to know to for rapid creating applications, including a built-in express server, database, visual designer, support for React, and elimination of callback hell. So what makes node run different than the other node editors and ID is that it's built in with business application development in mind, whether you are creating a sales dashboard or web services, node run will be your best friend in the office place. Node run.com is also a live interactive development community where you can share, collaborate on your projects. Best of mm -hmm. all, you mm -hmm. can start using node run today, absolutely free. So visit node run.com today and get started. To understand how to fetch data using suspense, let's take two simple examples. One would be where we don't use uh, suspense and fetch, and then one where we do use it and try to compare what problem we're trying to solve. We're going to stick with a really simple example. So here's a, an application I created using Create React App. It's simple template. And I've created this component called name, which is nothing but uh, some hard-coded text that I'm using in my main app. And when I render it, it just simply renders this name here. Now, instead of just hard-coded name, let's fetch this name from a server. We're not gonna actually fetch the name from the server. We're just gonna create a promise that resolves itself. Uh, so as if, with some delay, so as if it's uh, fetched. And the way fetch works in React is that you wanna first render the page before you start fetching the data. If you're using classes, then you would use lifecycle uh, event uh, such as component did mount, which makes sure the page is loaded before you uh, you start fetching the data. It's called fetch on render. So we're gonna use that pattern here as well. But here we're gonna use hooks. So here I'm gonna use two things, use state and use effect. Now here I'm going to create that constant call name. So instead of hard coded, we're gonna create a variable which will have set name and use state and we're going to initialize it with an empty string. So when do you actually make the API call? It's when the page is loaded. And when do we know when the page is loaded? Through use effect. So here in the use effect, uh, we're going to just use a, a pass a second argument as an empty string, which means this is gonna run the first time when the page loads. Again, if you wanna know more about use effect and use state and the hooks, I have a whole series of tutorials. I'll provide the link here. Okay, so inside inside the use effect, I'm going to create a promise called get name equal to new promise. And this promise, if you know, it has resolve and reject which is a callback function. And inside this callback function, instead of making an API call, we're just gonna simply do set timeout, which means it's gonna wait for a few seconds and then it's gonna return or resolve the promise. And set timeout has two arguments. One is a callback function and some delay. Here I'm gonna put four seconds, which means 4,000 milliseconds. 
And inside this callback function, I'm just going to simply say set name as techsif. So I'm resolving the promise, so it's a guarantee resolve. And when the promise is resolved, so when it runs dot then, at that point, it will run this callback function with result. Oh, actually, this should be a result, my bad. And here it's going to be uh, set name. And we're going to use the result to set the name. So let's understand this promise. So once the page is loaded, it's going to run this use effect on first time. At that point, this promise gets invoked, which gets resolved in four seconds. And that point, it sets a name. So we will have this name Texit as if we made an API call. And now instead of hard coded Texit, we can do name this variable. So now if I refresh this page, it takes four seconds. And then if I add, let's say, some title, so instead of just simply name, I have added a title. And now if you look at it, so initially when I render it, it title shows up and then text it shows up, which means this is called fetch on render. It renders the page first. Once it finishes rendering, at that point, it uh, makes an API call. And this is the typical pattern that React uh, follows. Now the issue here is this is just the one component. What if this name component has a subcomponent called address.js? And I can simply copy everything that is inside name and then put it inside address. But instead of name, this is going to call address. The address we're going to resolve is, let's call it 111 Texit Drive Nowhere USA. And you export the address. Now, inside name, I'm going to import this. So I'm going to say, and this is the same level. And then here, after name, I'm going to use address. Okay, so now if I refresh this, it has title and address title. Let's do it again. It has title and address title and somehow magically the other stuff sh starts showing up. So we need some sort of loading state which says, okay, uh, I'm loading the name and loading the address. So here what I will do is Around here, I can say if the name is not available, then I want to return this component, say h2, which says loading name. And let's call this name title. So it's not inside the address, I can also do the same thing if the address is not available, then I can also return, let's say h2 tag, which says loading, it's loading name, loading address, and then the address shows up. So the problem here is, um, it's kind of weird. First, it renders a title, if I look at again, it first uh, renders a title, then it fetches the name. Then once it's done, that it renders this, and then once it's done, it fetches the address. So it kind of slow. Also, it's unpredictable. So that's why we need to do both rendering and fetching at the same time. That's where the concurrency mode comes in the picture. I wanted to show you so that you understand what's going on. Okay, so now let's look at an example where we fetch data using suspense, which means we are going to render the page and at the same time, we're gonna 
fetch the data. So they're both happening at the same time, hence the concurrency mode. So React added this feature, which currently is in a beta version, but it will be available soon for everybody to use. If you're watching this video a little bit later, uh, this feature may be available in your production version. So FII. So how do I install a better version? So right now, so right now if I go to my package.json, it says the version of React that I have is uh, 16.13. So what I will do here is so I'm going to install both React and React Dome as experimental. And, and now if I look at the version, it would have some experiment version. So the API code. So now the code to get the data from the server, the API call, I'm going to put it in a separate file. I'm going to call this um, API.js. The code will be more declarative, which means instead of making API calls and then checking what it is and all that stuff. Uh, this will be much more simpler, much more declarative, which makes more sense. And that's how things should be. And that's why React is moving toward this. So let's first fetch our name. So I'm going to say function fetch name. Okay, so I've written the, the fetch name, which is nothing but a promise. It returns a promise with the set timeout, which is what we did previously. And this promise returns the dissolves the address. Now, since it's going to be declarative, uh, we want to have a wrapper, a common wrapper that will handle both promises. And I can pass one of these promise inside. So I'm going to call it this promise. The status would be pending, right? So because we are writing declarative code, we're going to say status equal to pending. Then we'll have some result, which would be empty at the moment. So I'm not going to, um, it will be undefined. Then I'm going to resolve this uh, the promise. I'm going to create a, uh, an object called suspender equal to. Uh, this takes a promise. Remember, we were doing then right after this. Here it's more declarative, so I'm going to say then here. Uh, so you will have result, and I can error handle a resolve or reject case both here. So let's say if it's uh, a resolve, then I have a result, and I can also have error. I'm going to set the state status to be. Success. I'm going to set the result equal to, I forgot the equal to whatever the result that I received. Okay. So if it's this promise, then it's going to be texted. If it's this promise, then it's going to be this address. In case of error, I want to have status to be error and result to be the error. And this function will return an object or, or function called read. And it's just going to check if the status is, let's say, equal to pending. Then it's going to throw suspender. Else if, let's say, status is equal to Control result and else if same again status equal to let's say success also throw the result because the for for this result will be actual result and for this result will be the error which we already defined here so now we have the these two functions and this wrap promise now let's actually create the functionality here so we can complete the the circle so here i'm going to create um, export function fetch data function would create two promises let name promise 
equal to, it's going to call this name. And the second promise is going to be address promise equal to fetch address. And then it's going to return an object with two properties. One's going to be address. And I'm just going to wrap this. Since I cre uh, created this promise, I'm just going to wrap this with this wrap promise and then pass this, the name promise. And the second property of this would be name, which also name promise. Oh, this is supposed to be address promise. So here, first of all, in your main app, I want to import the fetch data that I just created. from the api.js and before i make any any rendering i'm just going to on the top i'm going to call the the fetch data so let's say const equal to fetch data remember instead of uh, putting inside the use effect I'm actually calling in the front and then I'm going to create two components instead of creating component fold. I'm just going to do it here. So it's all here uh, because it's going to be pretty simple. So I'm going to have a name and const name equal to name dot read. Remember in the API, I have uh, when I fetches this, it has this address and name which returns read function. So again, it may look kind of complex, but once you get used to it, it's pretty simple. H2 and name. So here is the same thing, address, resource, address, read. And when I get it, I call it. Now, all I'm going to do is I have two components, name and address, name tag here, when I compile it, it says address suspended while rendering. And that is because we are not using suspense yet. So let's start using it. So this would complete the circle. Uh, because it's part of the React, I would get suspense from here. And I need to provide some sort of fallback, which means because it's so declarative, it's fast to data, uh, create these components and use it. But because we are using concurrency mode, we don't know when the data is available. So we need to wait for suspense. And again, it, it looks like a mystery. So suspense takes care of it. So while the data is not available, use this fallback. So I can say fallback equal to and loading. I see there's a one error, which is because in api.js um, at the end, one is a success. Instead of throw result, I should say uh, return result. And it's loading and after four seconds, they both show up. Because there's a fix four second delay, uh, it looks like it's delayed. But the cool thing about this is it started getting the, the data as, uh, while it's rendering the page. And the code looks more synchronous when you read it as if uh, things were already loaded. If you look at it, it doesn't, you don't see that. Okay, if it's not there, what should you do? That's it, folks. Uh, I hope you learned something new from this video. And if you did, please like. Don't forget to like, like, subscribe, and provide a nice comment. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter. You can check out my Facebook group so you can learn something new. Uh, or also, you can buy my Udemy courses and you can translate this video for me. Uh, the information is in the description. And thank you.